In this tutorial we'll be creating the speed reveal effect using particles without any plugins. Let's get right into it. So first thing I'm going to create a new solid and we'll call this background. Let's make it black. And I'll create a new solid and we'll name this particles. We can change the color later on but this will define which color our particles is going to be. So let's go with something light blue like so. And I'll also create a camera. Okay. And the effect we're going to add is called CC Ball Action. So this effect basically creates tiny balls out of the object you're putting it on. So if I go ahead and select my camera tool, you can see I'm able to rotate around it and so on, just like a 3D object. I'll go ahead and set my grid spacing to 8, the ball size to maybe 10, and I will go ahead and scatter the particles. I will also increase the displacement here a bit, like so. Let me just scatter this a bit more. And now we basically want to create sort of a zoom effect. So we're going to set a keyframe for our camera position here. And let's go to about here. And we'll just animate the Z position flying through these particles. And I'll also set a keyframe on my first frame for the displace, scatter, and maybe the ball size as well. Let's set the ball size to be about 3 on the beginning. And about here, I'm going to set it to 8 just so it looks like it's scaling over time. And on my final frame here, let's add some displacement to our particles until they're off frame and just increase the scattering a bit. So this is what we're getting so far. Now, the only problem with this effect is that there is no motion blur. And sure, we can add a plugin on top of that, but that's not what we want to do. So we can actually add an effect called radial blur. And if we go into the type here and change it to zoom, we can sort of mimic the effect of speed when the particles are flying through. So if I go ahead and set a keyframe here from zero and right about here, I'm gonna set it to 20 and play this back. You can see we're sort of mimicking this speed type of effect when it's flying through the particles. Now I'm actually gonna go into my camera position and select my keyframes hit F9 and go into my graph and I'm gonna create sort of a ramp so it goes from slow to fast just so it adds to our effect something like so. So with this speed ramp it's just making it look much faster like it's zooming in but one more thing I want to add is I'm gonna pre-compose this whole thing and I'm gonna add a wiggle from our presets you should see wiggle position and I'm gonna set a keyframe on the beginning here set the wiggle amount to maybe 5 the speed to zero and let's set two keyframes here. Now when we are pretty up close I am gonna set this to 20 and the speed to maybe 5 and then we can set these two back to zero. Let's select them, hit F9 and we'll animate the graph like so. And don't forget to enable motion blur on your pre-comp so the shake actually receives motion blur. Alright, let's go back into our main comp here and I'm gonna go ahead and add a glow to our particles. Now you can use any glow, but obviously deep glow always looks much better, but the default glow would also give you a pretty cool result. But for now, let's go ahead and add a deep glow and I'm just gonna lower the exposure here and I'm gonna create a text and while holding our text, I'm gonna hit Control alt home to position our anchor point in the middle and Control home to center it. Now I'm gonna make it 3D and let's position it somewhere in the back here, like so. And I'm gonna add layer styles gradient overlay. And if I go into my gradient overlay style here to reflect it and increase my scale here to 150 and lower my opacity. And this is just to give it some texture instead of using just a plain white text. And I'm gonna drop it below my particles here. Now I do wanna make sort of a continuous movement once the camera reaches the end. Now a trick I like to do is by creating a null object and I'll connect my camera to this null object and make it 3D. Now hit P for position and before our keyframe here reaches the end I'm gonna set a keyframe for my null object and I'll go to the end of my comp and just zoom in a bit more. And one more thing I want to add to my text there is I will go in here and select tracking. And I will set a keyframe for the tracking here go to the end of my composition and set this to about three, just so the layers expand. You don't have to do this, this is extra, but I'm just showing you all the steps that I took to create the video you've seen in the beginning. Now to reveal my text, instead of just 
fading it in. I'm actually going to be adding a solid here and we'll make it black and I'll add a gradient to it, swap the colors and change this to radial and I'll just create a small circle here in the middle and I can go into my scale here and just scale it on the vertical axis like so. I will pre-compose this and we'll call this gradient. Now on my text there, I'm going to use an effect called gradient wipe. So if I set my softness here to 50 and set my transition to 100 and set a keyframe, go a few frames forward and set it to zero. Let me just reposition this here. You can see this sort of gives it an interesting fade in. But if we go ahead and select our gradient here, then the transition is going to be driven by the gradient we created in this pre-comp. Another thing you can do is drop a space background like this one. We'll make it 3D and make sure you move it really far away in your composition. And let's go to the first frame and just scale this up until it fits the comp. And I can lower the opacity to maybe 20 just so we get an interesting darker look. Now lastly, in my final comp, I added a Saber effect, which is a plugin, but it is a free plugin. So let me go ahead and show you how I've added it, just in case you want to know. So I'll make the Saber layer 3D. I'll copy the position of my text and paste it onto my Saber layer, just to make sure it's aligned. And I'll scale it down. And here I'll just go into Core and set this to Text Layer and select my text. Play around with the settings here and we'll change the layer type to additive. Let's scale this up to fit the text. And then we just keyframe the opacity here to match the text there. All right, this is it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.